Hello everyone and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. In today's video, I will show you how to easily create or recreate reflection in your landscape images. Now this great technique is inspired by Scott Kelby from Kelby One and it's really easy to apply to your images. So now without any further ado, let's jump into Luminar Neo and start. Ok, so we are in Luminar Neo, catalog module and as always we are starting by looking at our sample file. Now here goes a quick reminder that if you want to follow me along, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the sample file now. Once you have it ready, add it to Luminar Neo and we can start. Now looking at this image, it's my capture of the Illendonan castle in Scottish Highlands, just very basically I flew the drone over and captured this beautiful view. Now looking at it, I already had a little bit of reflection here, however I'm really not happy with all the seagrass and just the grass around, I think it's quite distracting, so what I would like to do is to recreate it, I would really like to get a nice reflection. Now this is where the technique from Scott Kelby come in. It's a little bit basic and usually it's done in Photoshop. However, to be honest, it can actually work very well on this image, so I'm gonna show you now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna select the image and move it into the edit module. In the edit module, looking at the image, I have already applied all the adjustments, so we're not gonna do any of that. However, if you're looking for a lesson about how to develop your photos, I have many tutorials about that, and you can find them on our YouTube channel, Clever Photographer. Now we're moving to our reflection, and the first thing we need to do is to move into our layers and duplicate the current layer. To do that, we're gonna right click on the layer and select duplicate layer. So now we have a two layers. Now, similar to Photoshop, we have the layer on the top here, which is now activated. And then we have the layer under and it would go on and on. So what we wanna do, we wanna select the top layer. With that being done, we now gonna move into our layer properties on our main toolbar. Here, we actually gonna flip the image. So we're going to look down here under the blend modes and we're going to select the flip vertical. So let's do that. Now we're going to flip it. Now, for some of you, I'm guessing you're already starting to get the idea on what we're going to do. But first, what we need to do is to adjust the opacity. We need to see what we're doing. So let's do that. Let's take the opacity slider and bring it down. By doing that, we can see the original image and our new image. Now, depending on your eyes and your screen, um, you're going to adjust it to what you prefer. Now, for me, I think somewhere around 75 for now looks good. And we're going to take our image and drag it down. So we're going to do that. Now, let's just put this aside. Basically, what we're trying to do is to align the sky and the top part of the second layer with the reflection. So let's have a look at it. I think somewhere around here looks good when it comes to height. And now we just need to position it back. So let's have a look at it. I think, I think that around here looks good. Once you sort of happy with the position, then it's a good practice to take the opacity slider and kind of bring it down and up to see what it does. And actually this for me looks quite good. Maybe we need to just center it a little bit more. And for now, what we're going to do, we're going to leave the opacity and everything else. And we actually going to go into the masking. So we still have the top layer selected, we have flipped it, we have adjust the position to basically just bring the new reflection. And now we're going to go into the masking. And in the masking, we're going to select brush. With the brush selected, we're going to select erase, and we're going to make our brush much bigger. After that, we're going to adjust the softness down to 5, and we're going to leave the strength on 100. Now we basically just gonna erase the top part. Everything other than the water. So we're gonna do that, all of that, and even a little bit more here. So that's the basic adjustment here. After this, we need to zoom in a little bit, I think around here. And when you have your brush selected, you can use the space bar to move around. 
and we need to come to the position where basically there is the point between the reflection and between the original image. So in this case, that's around here in the middle, following the island and so on. Now we need to adjust the size of our brush. So let's go down, I think, to around here. And we're just going to make one click on a side here. So let's do that. One tap. After that, we want to hold shift and basically tap on the other side of the bridge. So that will do that. Now we're going to follow the island. So one tap, another, and another, and again, hold spacebar to move, another tap. And all we're doing, if I show the mask, is basically creating line between these clicks. So I didn't really explain that. What you're going to do, you're going to tap once or click once. That will create one point. And then you hold shift. And when you click there and hold shift, it creates a straight line between the two points. And Actually, we're just going to finish it off somewhere around here. So that's a good start. Now we can very quickly remove the leftover of the mask from above. And we're just going to switch off the mask. And we are starting to look good. Now let's zoom out and let's return into the properties in our layer properties. Here, now what we can do, we can increase the opacity to 100. And wow, look at that. We already have a really good reflection, but it doesn't look very realistic. It looks too perfect. So we need to make a few more adjustments. We still have the layer selected. So what we're going to do, we're going to go again into the main toolbar and we're going to go down to the creative section. In a creative section, we're going to go into the blur and we're going to select the motion blur. With the motion blur selected, what I want you to do is to take the amount slider and increase it all the way to 100. By doing that, you can see the direction of the blur. Now you need to adjust the direction based on your image and also the direction of the wave or the current. For me, for this image, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the angle slider and bring it all the way down. I want it to be going in a direction from bottom up or up to bottom. Once we have that done, we now need to adjust the amount and bring it down. Now, we're going to bring it down to the point where we can't see this hard edge. So let's do that. Let's go to somewhere around four. That looks better. Yeah, maybe even five. So by doing that, the reflection doesn't look that perfect. You get a little bit of movement in it and it just looks a little bit more believable. Now, it's up to you how much you want to add. For me, I think that five looks good. Another trick on how to make it a little bit more believable is to actually darken the reflection. So what we can do, again, still the layer selected, we go up to the Essentials tool, open the Develop tool, and simply take the exposure and bring it down. However, if we do it globally like this, again, we will see the line between the reflection and the original image. So to adjust this, we're going to go into the masking, and in the masking, we're going to use the linear gradient. So let's select that and basically just create the gradient from the bottom up. Now, if you never use the linear gradient, it basically is a gradient with three lines. We have the bottom line where there is the 100% of the mask. We have the middle line where there is 50% of the mask. And we have the top line where basically the mask disappear. And basically it goes step by step from 100% of the mask all the way to zero. Now you can drag it up and down if you want the gradient bigger or smaller, and you can position it in a different place, and you can also rotate it. So let's have a look at it. I think somewhere around here is good. And to see the result, we need to go back to the adjustments. Now looking at it, that looks much better. Let's have a look quickly before and after, and it's perfect, almost perfect. So. Let's just add even more darkening by bringing the exposure slider down. And we are done. I mean, come on, let's have a look at the before and after. So it's already looking great. However, if we want, we can continue and make it even more believable. Now, before we're going to continue, just a quick reminder that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Photo Manipulation Masterclass. If you want to unlock your creativity and enhance your photo editing skills with Luminar Neo, this is exactly the class you need. 
Join us and dive deep into our best-selling course featuring 15 fantastic photo manipulation projects with over 6 hours of high-quality training videos. Now you can get it now for a special discounted price by following the link in the description of this video and to find out more about it, just head to our website cleverphotographer.com. Now back to our edit, let's have a look at the before and after. And first we need to adjust is the rock here. If you look at this point when I show you the before, you can see that there is a rock formation there. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna still select our reflection layer and then we're gonna zoom there. Still use spacebar to move around and once you're there, open the layer properties and go into the masking. We're gonna use brush and we need to be on erase. After this, again, zoom in a little closer, make sure that your softness is on 100 and strength, well, let's go to 80 to start. We're gonna be adjusting our size of the brush using the bracket keys on the keyboard so we don't have to go back and forward and we basically gonna start from here. So let's have a look at it. We want to bring this rock back in. Now that already starting to look much better. And by doing that, I think that part will look much more believable. So we need to see how much of the rock is there. Now, one way to do this also is again, returning back to properties and maybe bringing down the opacity just a little bit. So we can see. Back to masking, still on brush, maybe adjust the size and let's paint here. If we want, we can actually bring the strength even higher, maybe to 90 and go ahead and adjust all of this. Still a little bit more of the island to make it again a little bit better and to blend it a little bit more together. So this is all good. This is all good. Here what we can do, we can make our brush a little bit bigger and just tap once and basically create a nice transition between the water and our reflection. Similar in the middle of the bridge, yeah, something like this. And maybe, maybe even here, something like this. Now, coming back to this part, let's have a look at it. What do we have? Actually, let's bring on the mask. And I think that this part doesn't look that great. So also let's remove it. Now, of course, that this adjustment will very much vary based on your image, but um, you just need to play around with it and see what works the best. Let's have a look. Does this look good? Not really, let's remove the mask and let's switch our brush back to paint. And actually we're gonna just paint the reflection back in here by the rocks. So I think something like this. Does it look good? No. So back erase and still keep erasing even this part. Yeah, that looks great. So That's much better. This is all good, all good. It's always a good idea also to zoom out and have a look at what we're doing. And don't forget that it's also good to go back to properties and increase the opacity just to see the result. And actually that looks great. That looks much better. Now there is a little edge here. So back to masking, let's show the mask. Yep, 100% softness, maybe less on the strength. And let's just bring a bigger brush and just make it a little smoother, the whole transition. Let's have a look. Switch of the mask and that's great. So now we are done with this, we can go back to the properties, hit enter, and one more time, have a look at the before and after. How crazy is this? Well, the last step, what we could do is just to crop the image to my favorite 16 or nine, make sure that the reflection is in the middle, so somewhere around here, following the line of the main subject, hit the enter, so everything get cropped and adjusted, and just like this, we have this incredible reflection and incredible result. And just like that, we are finished with today's tutorial. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. And if you have any questions, make sure that you write them in the comment section under this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future content. One more time, my name was Jacob Bors, I was your guide on today's Luminar Neo tutorial and I absolutely can't wait to see you in the next one.